नमस्ते द हिंदू कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ दश अवतार द टेन इनकारनेशन ऑफ गॉड इज कनेक्टेड टू द एवल्यूजन ऑफ लाइफ दैट लाइफ ऑन अर्थ इवॉल्व फ्रॉम मत्स्या देन कुर्मा फर्स्ट लाइफ केम इन टू बींग अंडर वॉटर देन एम्फीबियंस एंड सो ऑन एंड सो फोर्थ एंड नरसिम्हा इज द एवल्यूशनरी स्टेट इन बिटवीन एनिमल एंड मैन and uh, then comes of course parashuram ram krishna and buddha and uh, in a video sadguru ji nicely explains that even there we can see the evolution like parashuram is very aggressive and then rama is a uh, evolutionary higher step from that and then krishna and then buddha a meditative man so one might think that uh, so do we see evolution even among avatars it's not like that the avatar is always conscious of his highest self but the thing is it uh, incarnates according to the society and it gives it contributes to the society as much as the society at that time or the world at that time can grass ram he came into a society where it wasn't that much civilized so his contribution was law and order a proper administration as a king equal justice but see he doesn't give much of spiritual teachings you might say that well ram received spiritual teachings from rishis there was a group of uh, advanced human beings always on earth from the days ancient times there was a group of human beings who were advanced like rishis they were there, but they lived in their own groups away from the society in forests or in mountains uh, but ram doesn't give to the society at large because avatar means they are always contributing towards the common masses towards the common humanity so the society wasn't ready for that kind of spiritual knowledge yet so they needed to learn a civilized way of living just that so ram contributed in that way and when krishna came he gave spiritual advice spiritual instructions methods of sadhana and buddha of course he taught a more non violent way of living a more peaceful way of life in at a time when people fought among each other at least opened up the option of a more peaceful living of a vegetarian diet an option of a way of living that is harmonious with nature all avatars may be guru nanak swami narayan uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu they all have their contributions after the advent of each avatar uh, because he brings this higher energy and spreads it globally so there's always this uh, a revival or an enriching of art and architecture and literature music dance everything after each the advent of each avatar there would be a revival in all these things because the whole human consciousness has leveled up into the next state it's also known that each avatar was and is a doorway to the divine sri ram krishna says that avatar is like an opening through which humans can perceive into the infinite But each avatar is actually a doorway what does he mean by that even there is a similar quote of jesus like this and what is meant that praying to him connecting with him chanting his name meditating upon him using a yantra of him in any way you get connected to this divine incarnation that is a doorway through which immediately you pass on into the divine into the ocean of super, supreme consciousness so every avatar even every god and goddess all gods and goddesses even they are all doorways to the divine and as i had already said that even the gods and goddesses are like gurus to us what was sri ram krishna's contribution specifically there were social reforms that was brought about by this ram krishna vivekananda movement and of course there is this revival again of art and literature and architecture centering around the ram krishna vivekananda movement envisioning a society all inclusive where uh, all
all castes are embraced everybody is treated equally whether they are rich or poor intellectual or common educated or ordinary uh, even prostitutes and people who have gone astray everybody this all inclusiveness this thing these were also done by previous avatars and ramakrishna is merely doing it again and again like it's the cleansing of the society as a whole and uh, restating re-establishing actual dharma and then integrating advaita in daily life by the method of service serve others and uh, through service the purification of one's mind and approaching the divine through love and devotion and the negativity in the negative aspects of the society which needed to be destroyed in the previous avatars of ram or krishna in the form of kansa or ravana or even in the more previous avatars of devi where he she kills all the demons uh, during even in the avatars of chaitanya mahaprabhu or jesus it's they show the transformation of the negative aspect of the society trying to transform the negative aspect of the society rather than destroying them completely um, swami narayan in swami narayan's avatar is the same in chaitanya mahaprabhu's avatar is the same uh, even in nanak's avatar is the same even thakur does the same like the negative trying to transform the negative aspects of the society into positive aspects rather than trying to destroy it completely so this these patterns were the same in previous avatars and also in thakur now what thakur does uniquely is that avatar always opens up for the collective human consciousness the next evolutionary step he unlocks the next evolutionary step now before we used to know that after nirvikalpa samadhi after experiencing the unified consciousness that was the ultimatum in spiritual life and after having experienced that the sadhaka died within 21 days it was impossible to preserve the body of a normal sadhaka not an avatar but for a normal sadhaka now thakur what he says gyane pore bigyan after gyan there comes the state of vigyana again he says that you achieve the state of gyana have it with you and then you play here in whatever way you want to achole gyan bedhe tar pore ja khushi tai karo that's what he says in bengali brahmana ji maharaj ji says nirvikalpa samadhi is the starting point of spiritual life okay the same thing that thakur says so he unlocks the state of vigyana which wasn't there before so even after having tasted the unified consciousness even having after having experienced the state of highest nirvikalpa samadhi the sadhaka can retain his body will retain his body and can, will be able to function in this world the next step next evolutionary step has been unlocked another thing that he does you which is unique is that he worships holy mother as the divine mother and swami ji says that with this worship the kula kundalini of the whole world has been awakened that is the kundalini shakti the feminine principle of the collective human consciousness has been reawakened it was a it was already there from the primitive times but it was suppressed uh, due to hundreds and hundreds of years of suppression the feminine principle was suppressed and it was reawakened by thakur people don't have to even know who contributed and in what ways but it's it can be seen everywhere isn't it the way women are uh, awakening getting aware uh, understanding their own capacities uh, finding their own voice their own freedom trying to reestablish themselves the balance between the masculine and the feminine in the society and even not only in women you will see this feminine principle in the collective human consciousness see in previous days what kind of men were admired oh men who are very powerful very muscular very strong or having a very high position in society they were admired but now if you see the trend everywhere the trend is that which kind of men are being appreciated who are emotionally grounded who know their weak parts too who are more understanding more loving more caring more motherly quote unquote more motherly 
So the awakening of the feminine principle, the awakening of the mother principle in the society, in this patriarchal society, previously patriarchal society, that was a huge contribution of Thakur. And of course, Aurobindo and mother also, the next next avatars and the next next saints keep on working on the same things, uh, even Sadhguru now, and uh, integrating spiritual life into the daily life of, of people, which Thakur did. This again is being continued by the next next saints and avatars that... Uh, Spirituality has entered everywhere in schools, in colleges, in yoga, yoga classes, uh, in innumerable, even in ar archaeology, people who are, you know, studying Indian temples or in ancient temples, uh, spirituality has entered business sectors, even, even jails, even prisons. So spirituality is entering everywhere. And uh, Thakur's another contribution was that the previously this uh, Gyan Margi people or the Bhakti Margi people, in, at least in Hinduism, these categories were very well defined. Thakur comes and make a khichdi of, of it all. That it's all all done together. So Ramakrishna Mission movement is based on that principle that uh, work also, karma yoga also, jnana yoga also, reading scriptures and even bhakti, doing kirtan, bhajan, songs and again uh, meditating, advaita, dvaita, he merges everything into one and also in previous avatars, uh, even Krishna showed his Vishwarupa but then Sarva Devi's, Deva Devi Swarupa, yes, Sri Ramakrishna, Yana Mahavi said, so he had he is the fusion of the consciousness of all gods and goddesses as perceived from the perspective of human consciousness. He is the fusion of the highest possibility that man can reach at a modern state. So, he is the totality of all the uh, ad spiritual advancement of the past and also all the possibility of the future. And see, he the those little things like his body became transparent, sort of. And even if he used to walk in the sunlight, he, there his body wouldn't cast a shadow. So these are futuristic. The possibility of the human body, the next level of next evolutionary step, even the human body will take. A a body, a brain, which is telepathically connected with everything eyes that can see through everything. Thakur used to say, I see everything like it's all made of glass. I can see under, out, inside and outside all through and through uh, in the minds of the people. So a society of human beings where they are telepathically connected with each other. A, a bodies which are almost transparent. They don't cast shadows. And uh, 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 human beings who are full of compassion and love who live in harmony with nature and the divine. So that future possibility, maybe it's a possibility after thousands and thousands of years, could be. But then Thakur, is, he unlocks that possibility in you know, collective human consciousness. There might be many more aspects that can be discussed regarding the contributions of Thakur Man Swamiji and uh, the contributions are so far and wide and so deep. There would be so many, you know, things more left to be said about this. But whatever I understood till now, through Thakur's grace, I'm sharing just that. Hari Om, Jai Ma, Jai Thakur.